Hi again, everybody. Jeff Joniak and Tom Thayer with you from PNC Studios here at Hattlesaw. We got your Week 11 preview. The Bears entertain John Harbaugh's Baltimore Ravens. They come in at a record of 6-3 and three and are first place in the AFC North. This is the final trip through the AFC North for the Bears. What we learn about the division is, yes, there's a ton of physicality, and the Bears have played the division well. They've played them tough, and they're going to have to do that again against Baltimore. Yeah, you know, and Baltimore is a team that they don't have all the pieces in place. They're struggling a little bit. They're trying to figure out the rotation of their running back position. They have had injuries on the offensive line. They just announced Derek Wolf isn't coming back, one of their talented defensive linemen. So how do you compartmentalize all that? You still got to stop Lamar Jackson. That's the unique thing about this team, Jeff. You can have different players coming and going. But as long as they always have number eight, they're oh, yeah. still a threat. Heck of a matchup when you talk about young quarterbacks yeah. that can uh, yeah. make plays on the hoof, as they say. Uh, Justin Fields with great progress in that loss to Pittsburgh. I almost said win because five more yards and, you know, Cairo Santos is right down the middle in a game-winning walk-off field goal. But what he did, and we've talked about it a lot already, just that second-half performance in that environment, how loud it was, what was at stake, and leading a scoring drive that put them ahead and could have had the game-winning drive to walk out of there with the fourth win of the year. Yeah, you know, when you think about what they did in the second half, it's unfortunate that they didn't have better field position at the start yeah. of the game where maybe they could have changed the flow of the game, taken some more chances out of their own end zone. However, like you said, they came and went to the locker room, made some halftime adjustments, came back and were able to perform at a really competitive level at the second half. But it's how do you take that after uh, a, team, a loss like that into a bye week and use it against your next opponent. And I think that's what we're all waiting to see on Sunday. Well, because more players are touching the football now, okay? Starting with tight end Cole Komet. You have Jimmy Graham out there. Uh, Darnell Mooney getting used in a variety of ways. And you got the running game to lean on. That's the important part of this. Keep that going well. Keep that throttle going on the running game because it can set up everything else with the play action and Justin's mobility. Yeah, I think Justin's mobility has kind of put him on the map now to defensive coordinator saying, okay, we have to devise a scheme against Justin Fields. Not necessarily of what the Bears used to be, it's what they're becoming. And I think he has such an important role in the future success of the Bears in terms of where they can go offensively. But again, it's nice to see when you mention the Wildcat. It looks like the old T formation when they got Khalil Herbert, Darnell Mooney, uh, Ryan Nall, and Dave Montgomery in the backfield. It gives you a variety of things you can do out of that formation and, you know, gives a little relief to Justin. Well, look how many times the Steelers use fly sweep and get the ball in the yeah. hands of these guys. It's as good as a 10-yard, 11-yard, 15-yard pass play if you stick it in the belly of the guy and you got some good blocking up front. So what exactly is Justin Fields going to be looking at? Well, it's going to be an interesting made for, tailor made for your offense kind of defense by Wink Martindale. He's outstanding at designing blitzes. It's complex, and you got to figure out in the offensive protection time, which you can speak to better than me, has to be on point because they come at you from a variety of angles. They blitz as much as anybody in the league the last three years. And so everybody's got to be in tune, not just the old linemen, the backs, the tight ends, everybody involved here, including Justin. Well, you know, I, I think you can devise a scheme that will take advantage of what your skill set is. I think all the backs that you put in the bear, the defense or the backfield for the Bears, they're good blockers. You can rely upon them. I think the tight ends give you a lot of versatility on the edge with their ability to block and then still go out for routes. Their offensive line is doing a nice job of making sure they're pointed in the right direction by center Sam Mustafer. But again, this defense goes to work every single day in training camp and they see what Justin's going to offer them in the body of work that Lamar Jackson does in training camp. So they're not going to be caught by surprise because there's a quarterback with great versatility. It's about how Bill Lazor calls the plays. You got to keep that 50-50 balance where they're concentrating on stopping the run as much as they are as controlling the edge versus Justin. And he still talks about it. You know, on Monday night's uh, show on WBBM, the coach's show, got to figure right away, score points, score points, score points, because the Baltimore Ravens can score points. Now, what Miami did, let's flip it to see what the Bears defense is going to do. First of all, stopping the run has to again become an efficient process for the Bears defense. It does, but you're talking about the leading passer and the leading rusher is the same guy. So it's about the scheme. 
When you go back and you look at some opportunities though on tape of what the Miami Dolphins committed to when they are going to stop the Baltimore Ravens, it was a two-tier defense. Everybody on the line of scrimmage and then a, a backfield of defensive backs, whether they're three or four. Now you put a multiple bodies on the line of scrimmage, it confuses defenses. They know there's always going to be one rusher set free, and they were able to take advantage of it. Yeah, Baltimore uh, really was stymied. Yeah. That's the way to put it. Lamar did not uh, have a, a escape path anywhere. He, the, the, everything was shut down and he tried to throw a bunch of screens. I think he threw nine tunnel screens just to try to get the ball out quick and, and that was the most he had done, most in the league in a long time by any quarterback. So I guess until it's stopped, teams will try and still do it. I don't know. It doesn't fit the scheme for the Bears to do something similar. We're going to find that out. They're not going to reveal that until till Sunday when we see it firsthand, but there are options here to try and attack this guy. Yeah, you know, the thing about it is you have to tackle well. You have to make sure if Lamar Jackson escapes in the middle of the field, you have to leverage him towards the sideline. You gotta condense the size of the field and you have to contain rush him. But again, it's gonna be about the defensive backs being premier tacklers this game. If they're gonna run those screens at the outside, if Lamar's gonna get to the outside, Kendall D Vildor, Duke Shelley, Jalen Johnson, Eddie Jackson, uh, to Sean Gibson Sr. They all have to be premier tacklers. And then maybe you take a guy like DHC, DeAndre Houston Carson, and use him in that linebacker rover yeah. kind of mid-frame role. Got to keep eyes on this guy. Yeah. I mean, Roquan. Roquan's another one. Yes. You know, the speed yes. and range to get the sideline to sideline is a guy to watch in this particular matchup on a big stage here against Baltimore. Uh, the Ravens have some weapons, though, too. Hollywood Brown, six touchdown catches. He is fast and he's very good in yards after the catch. And then the big tight end, Mark Andrews, has uh, had a great year. Yeah, Brown is good. They're most explosive for receiver if they're going to try to get big plays downfield. But the consistency comes from the tight end position. Mark Andrews makes difficult catches at or near the line of scrimmage, and he can challenge whomever is going to have that coverage responsibility. Special teams always good with Baltimore. John Harbaugh, certainly a special teams coach. Before he became a head coach, puts a great emphasis on it. He's got one of the best kickers, maybe in NFL history, and Justin Tucker, who's got a 66-yarder <laughs> to his belt and three for three from 50-plus this year. Yeah, it's amazing what he's been able to do. I think that mid-range, he's seven of nine, but when you talk about the big kicks or the, the kicks of distances that you're expected to make, he's pretty reliable. And then in the return game, the Bears still trying to get that punt return average down by the opponent, and Devin DuVernay comes in with a really good punt return average. So that's a guy that uh, Chris Tabor is going to be focusing on for his crew. Yeah, but you know, Patrick O'Donnell is one of the best punters in the league, and he can put it in a small area. But it's about your coverage. It's making sure that, you know, Patrick doesn't outkick the coverage, but the coverage uh, accepts their responsibility. And again, it would talk about tackling in space when you refer to Lamar Jackson. You've got to be good tacklers in space when you're talking about punt returns. All right, a couple of nuggets. You're not going to like these, of course. These are statistics that emphasize just how impactful Lamar Jackson has been in the red zone in his career, 59 touchdowns, no interceptions, 15 rushing touchdowns, something to keep an eye on for the Bears. Red zone defense, which has been stingy and is really difficult to punch over the goal line. And then he has never lost as a starter against an NFC opponent, 12 and 0 with 20 touchdown passes. He's great against these Close guys. Close the windows in the red zone and beat him in Soldier Field. Let's hope so. And you get there and be loud and proud on Sunday. Good to have you. And we'll talk to you on the radio as well. News Radio 105.9 WBBM, starting with a pregame at 9, kickoff at noon. We'll see you at Soldier Field on Sunday. For Tom Thayer, I'm Jeff Joniak. Thanks for watching.